Bulgars. The Bulgars were Turkic semi-nomadic warrior tribes that flourished in the Pontic Caspian steppe in the Volga region during the 7th century. Emerging as nomadic equestrians in the Volga Ural region, according to some researchers their roots can be traced to Central Asia. During their westward migration across the Eurasian steppe the Bulgars absorbed other ethnic groups and cultural influences, including Hunnic and Indo-European peoples. Modern genetic research on Central Asian Turkic people and ethnic groups related to the Bulgars points to an affiliation with Western Eurasian populations. The Bulgars spoke a Turkic language, i.e. Bulgar language of O-Uric branch. They preserved the military titles, organization and customs of Eurasian steppes, as well as pagan shamanism and belief in the sky deity Tangra. The Bulgars became semi-sedentary during the 7th century in the Pontic Caspian steppe, establishing the polity of Old Great Bulgaria circa 635, which was absorbed by the Khazar Empire in 668 AD. In circa 679, Khan Asperuk conquered Scythia Minor, opening access to Mesia, and established the first Bulgarian Empire, where the Bulgars became a political and military elite. They merged subsequently with established Byzantine populations, as well as with previously settled Slavic tribes, and were eventually Slavicized, thus forming the ancestors of modern Bulgarians. The remaining Pontic Bulgars migrated in the 7th century to the Volga River, where they founded the Volga Bulgaria. They preserved their identity well in the 13th century. The Volga Tatars and Chuvash people claim to be originated from the Volga Bulgars. The etymology of the ethnon in Bulgar is not completely understood and difficult to trace back earlier than the 4th century AD. Since the work of Wilhelm Thomas Keck, it is generally said to be derived from the common Turkic Bulga, Bulga or Bulya, which with the consonant suffix R implies a noun meaning mixed. Other scholars have added that Bulga might also imply stir, disturb, confuse. And Talat Tekin interpreted Bulgar as the verb form mixing. Both Gula Namath and Peter Benjamin Golden initially advocated the mixed race theory, but later, like Paul Pelliot, considered that to incite, rebel, or to produce a state of disorder, i.e., the disturbers, was a more likely etymology for migrating nomads. According to Osman Karatai, if the mixed etymology relied on the westward migration of the ogres, meeting and merging with the Huns, north of the Black Sea, it was a faulty theory, since the ogres were documented in Europe as early as 463 while the Bulgars were not mentioned until 482 an overly short time period for any such ethnogenesis to occur. However, the mixing in question may have occurred before the Bulgars migrated from further east, and scholars such as Sam Ping Chen have noted analogous groups in Inner Asia, with phonologically similar names, who were frequently described in similar terms. During the 4th century, the Buluoji, a component of the five barbarian groups in ancient China, were portrayed as both a mixed race and troublemakers. Peter A. Budberg noted that the Buluoji in the Chinese sources were recorded as remnants of the Xinhua Confederation, and had strong Caucasian elements. Another theory linking the Bulgars to a Turkic people of Inner Asia has been put forward by Boris Simeonov, who identified them with the Pugu, a Dielan or Tokzogas tribe. The Puga were mentioned in Chinese sources from 103 BC up to the 8th century AD and later were situated among the Eastern Tl tribes, as one of the highest-ranking tribes after the Uyghurs. According to the Chronicle by Michael the Syrian, which comprises several historical events of different age into one story, three mythical Scythian brothers set out on a journey from the mountain Emeon in Asia and reached the river Tanais, the country of the Alans called Barsalia, which would be later inhabited by the Bulgars and the Pugars. The names Onagar and Bulgar were linked by later Byzantine sources for reasons that are unclear. Karatai interpreted Gur slash Gur as country, and noted the Tekken derivation of Gur from the Altaic suffix Gur, which is related to the word year, meaning earth, place. Generally, modern scholars consider the terms Ogas or Ogur, as generic terms for Turkic tribal confederations, to be derived from Turkic OG slash Yuk, meaning kinship or being akin to. The terms initially were not the same, as Ok slash OGS is Mentero, while Ogul meant offspring, child, son. Ogus slash Ugus was tribe, clan, and the verb Ogs slash Oaks are meant to be like, resemble. There also appears to be an etymological association between the Bulgars and the preceding Ku trigger Gur Toker, Nine in Proto Bulgar, Toks in Common Turkic, and Utigar, as Ogur tribes, with the ethnon in Bulgar as a spreading adjective. Golden considered the origin of the Ku triggers and Utigars to be obscuring their relationship to the Onagars and Bulgars, 
who lived in similar areas at the same time, as unclear. He noted, however, an implication that the Kotrigers and Utigers were related to the Sarigur, and that according to Procopius these were Hunnish tribal unions, of partly Sumerian descent. Karatai considered the Kutrigars and Utigars to be two related, ancestral people, and prominent tribes in the later Bulgar Union, but different from the Bulgars. Among many other theories regarding the entomology of Bulgar, the following have also had limited support. The origin of the early Bulgars is still unclear. Their homeland is believed to be situated in Kazakhstan and the North Caucasian steppes. Interaction with the Hunnic tribes, causing the migration, may have occurred there, but the Pontic Caspian steppe seems a more likely location. The first clear mention and evidence of the Bulgars was in the 480, when they served as the allies of the Byzantine Emperor Zeno against the Ostrogoths. Anachronistic references about them can also be found in the 7th century geography work Ashkaratsuits by Anania Shirekatsi, where the Kupi Bulgar, Dusi Bulkar, Oksantar Blakar and immigrant Sidir Bulkar tribes are mentioned as being in the North Caucasian Kuban steppes. An obscure reference to Zizi ex quo vulgaris, with Zizi being an offspring of biblical Shem, is in the chronography of 354. According to D. Dimitrov, the 5th century history of Armenia by Moves as Korenitsi speaks about two migrations of the Bulkars, from Caucasus to Armenia. The first migration is mentioned in the association with the campaign of Armenian ruler Valershake to the lands named Basin by the ancients, and which were afterwards populated by immigrants of the VH and Dor Bulgarvund, after whose name they were named Vinand. The second migration took place during the time of the ruler Arshake III, when great disturbances occurred in the range of the Great Caucasus Mountain, in the land of the Bulgars, many of whom migrated and came to our lands and settled south of Kuk. Both migrations are dated to the second half of the 48th century AD. The disturbances which caused them are believed to be the expansion of the Huns in the East European steppes. Dimitrov recorded that the toponyms of the Bolyan Vorodin rivers, tributaries of the Aras River, are known as Bolgaruchaj and Bananchaj, and could confirm the Bulgar settlement of Armenia. Around 463 AD, the Akat Saroy and other tribes that had been part of the Hunnic Union were attacked by the Saragurs, one of the first Ogyric Turkic tribes that entered the Ponto Caspian steppes as the result of migrations set off in Inner Asia. According to Priscus, in 463 the representatives of Saragur, Ogre and Onagur came to the emperor in Constantinople, and explained they had been driven out of their homeland by the Sabirs, who had been attacked by the Evers. This tangle of events indicates that the Oguric tribes are related to the Tingling and TL people. It seems that Kutrigars and Onigars arrived with the initial waves of Oguric peoples entering the Pontic steppes. The Bulgars were not mentioned in 463. The account by Paul the Deacon in his History of the Lombards says that at the beginning of the 5th century in the northwestern slopes off Carpathians the Vulgaris killed the Lombard king Agelmund. Scholars attribute this account to the Huns, Evers or some Bulgar groups were probably carried away by the Huns to the Central Europe. The Lombards, led by their new king Lamico, rose up and defeated the Bulgars with great slaughter, gaining great booty and confidence as they became bolder in undertaking the toils of war. The defeated Bulgars then became subjects of the Lombards and later migrated in Italy with their king Alboin. When the army of Ostrogoth chieftain Theodoric Strabo grew to 30,000 men strong, it was felt as a menace to Byzantine Emperor Zeno, who somehow managed to convince the Bulgars to attack the Thracian Goths. The Bulgars were eventually defeated by Strabo in 480-481. In 486 and 488 they fought against the Goths again, first as allies of the Byzantium, according to Magnus Felix and Odius, and later as allies of the Jepids, according to Paul the Deacon. However, when Theodoric the Great with Ostrogoths parted for Italy in 489, the Illyricum and Thrace were open for Bulgar raids. In 493, according to Marcellinus Cums, they defeated and killed Magister Militum Julian. In 499, Cross Danube and reached Thrace were on the banks off River Zurita defeated 15,000 men strong Roman army led by Magister Militum Aristus. In 502, Bulgars again devastated Thrace as reportedly there were no Roman soldiers to oppose them. In 528 to 529 again invaded the region and defeated Romain generals Justin and Baduarius. However, Gothic general, Mundus, offered allegiance to the Emperor Justinian I in 530, and managed to kill 5,000 Bulgars plundering Thrace. John Malal is recorded that in the battle was captured Bulgar warlord. In 535, Magister Militum Sidis defeated the Bulgar army at the river Yantra. In Odius, 
Jordanes and Procopius identify the Bulgars with the Huns in a 6th century literary topos, in which Enodius referred to a captured Bulgar horse as Aquim Huniskim. In 505, the alleged 10,000 Hun horsemen in the Sabinian army, which was defeated by the Ostrogoths, are believed to be the Bulgars. In 515, Bulgar mercenaries were listed along with others from the Goths, Scythians, and Hunnic tribes as part of the Vitalian army. In 539, two Hunnic kinglets defeated two Roman generals during the raid into Scythia Minor and Mesia. A Roman army led by Magister Mili Damascum and Constantiolus intercepted and defeated them in Thrace, however, Another raiding party ambushed and captured two Roman generals. In 539 and 540, Procopius reported a powerful Hunnic army crossed the Danube, devastated Illyricum, and reached up to the Anastasian Wall. Such large distances covered in short time indicate they were horsemen. Jordanes described, in his work Gitica, the Pontic steppe beyond the Akatsiri, above the Pontic Sea, as the habitat of the Bulgari, whom the evils of our sins have made famous. In this region, the Huni divided into two tribes, the Altsitri and Saviri, while the Hunuguri were notable for the Mardan skin trade. In the Middle Ages, Mardan skin was used as a substitute for minted money. The Syriac translation of Pseudo Zacharias Reader's Ecclesiastical History in Western Eurasia Records. The land Pisgun extends up to the Caspian Gates and to the sea, which are in the Hunnish lands. Beyond the gates live the Burgers, who have their language, and are people pagan and barbarian. They have towns. And the Alans, they have five towns. Of Nagarar people, who live in tens. Then he records thirteen tribes, the WNGWR, WGR, SBR, BWRGR, KWRTRGR, VR, KSR, SRWRGWR, Dyermer, Gersik, KWLS, BDL, and Kleit. They are described in typical phrases reserved for nomads in the ethnographic literature of the period as people who live in tents, earn their living on the meat of livestock and fish, of wild animals and by their weapons. Agathias wrote, All of them are called in general Scythians and Huns in particular according to their nation. Thus, some are Kautrigers or Outigers and yet others are Ultis or Sant Boruguns. The Ultisurs and Boruguns were known up to the time of the Emperor Leo and the Romans of that time and appeared to have been strong. We, however, in this day, neither know them, nor, I think, will we. Perhaps, they have perished or perhaps they have moved off to very far place. According to D. Dimitrov, scholars partially managed to identify and locate the Bulgar groups mentioned in the Armenian Ashkaratsuits. The Oksandr Blakar is one of the variations used for the Onagurs Bulgars, while others could be related to the ancient river names, such as the Kupi Bulgar and the Kuban. The Dusi could read Kuchi Bulkar and as such could be related to the Dnieper. However, the Cedir Bulkar location is unclear. Dimitrov theorized that the differences in the Bulgar ethnonym could be due to the dialect differentiations in their language. By the middle of the 6th century, the Bulgars momentarily fade from the sources and the Kutrigars and Utigars come to the front top between 548 and 576, mostly due to Justinian I. Through diplomatic persuasion and bribery the Kutrigars and Utigars were drawn into mutual warfare, decimating one another. In the end, the Kutrigars were overwhelmed by the Avars, while the Utigars came under the rule of the Western Turks. The Ogres and Onagers, in the 6th and 7th century sources, were mentioned mostly in connection with the Avar and Turk conquest of Western Eurasia. From the 8th century, the Byzantine sources often mention the Onagers in close connection with the Bulgars. Agathon wrote about the nation of Onagers Bulgars. Nikephoros I noted that Kubrat was the lord of the Onagundurs. His contemporary Theophanes referred to them as Onagundur Bulgars. Constantine VII remarked that the Bulgars formerly called themselves Onagundurs. This association was previously mirrored in Armenian sources, such as the Ashkaratsuites, which refers to the Oksandr Blakar, and the 5th century history by Moves's Koranitsi, which includes an additional comment from a 9th century writer about the colony of the Vlindur Bulkar. Mark Hart and Golden connected these forms with the Ignravibin al Kalbi. The Vnjur of Hudud al Alam, the WLNDR of Al Masudi, and Hungarian name for Belgrad Nandor Fehervor, the NNDR of Gardzi and Vuninchur in the letter by the Khazar King Joseph. All the forms show the phonetic changes typical of later Ogyric. Scholars consider it unclear how this union came about, viewing it as a long process in which a number of different groups were merged. During that time, the Bulgars may have represented a large confederation including the remnants of Onagers, Utigars, and Kutrigars, among others. 
the Turk rule weakened sometime after 600, allowing the Avars to re-establish the control over the region. As the Western Turkic Khaganate declined, finally collapsing in the middle of the 7th century, it was against Avar rule that the Bulkars, recorded as Anagundur Bulkars, reappeared. They revolted under their leader Kubrat, who seems to have been prepared by Heraclius against the Sasanian Avar alliance. With his uncle Organa in 619, Kubrat had been baptized in Constantinople. He founded the old Great Bulgaria, also known as Anagundur Bulgars State, or Patria Anaguria in the Ravenna cosmography. Little is known about Kubrat's activities. It is considered that Onagar Bulgars remain the only steppe tribes in good relations with the Byzantines. His date of death is placed between 650 and 663 AD. According to Nikephoros I, Kubrat instructed his five sons to never separate their place of dwelling from one another, so that by being in concordance with one another, their power might thrive. Subsequent events proved Old Great Bulgaria to be only a loose tribal union as there emerged a rivalry between the Khazars and the Bulgars over Turk patrimony and dominance in the Pontic Caspian steppe. Some historians consider the war an extension of the Western Turks' struggle, between the Nushibi tribes and Ashina clan, who led the Khazars, and the dulu slash tulu tribes, which some scholars associated with the Dulu clan, from which Kubrat and many Bulgar rulers originated. The Khazars were ultimately victorious and parts of the Bulgar Union broke up. It is unclear whether the parting ways by brothers was caused by the internal conflicts or strong Khazar pressure. The latter is considered more likely. The Bulgars led by the first two brothers Batbayan and Kotrag remained in the Pontic steppe zone, where they were known as Black Bulgars by Byzantine and Rus sources, and became Khazar vassals. The Bulgars led by Kotrag migrated to the Middle Volga region during the 7th and 9th centuries, where they founded Volga Bulgaria, with Bulgar as its capital. According to Ahmad ibn Rusta, the Volga Bulgars were divided into three branches, the first branch was called Bursala, the second Esaigal, and the third Bulgar. In 922 they accepted Islam as the official religion. They preserved their national identity well into the 13th century by repelling the first Mongol attacks in 1223. They were eventually subdued by the Mongols in 1237. They gradually lost their identity after 1431 when their towns and region were captured by the Russians. The third and most famous son, Asparuk, according to Nikephoros I. Asparuk, according to the pseudo Zacharias reader, fled from the Khazars out of the Bulgarian mountains. In the Khazar ruler Joseph's letter is recorded in the country in which I live, there formerly lived the Vanunshur. Our ancestors, the Khazars warred with them. The Vanunshur were more numerous, as numerous as the sand by the sea, but they could not withstand the Khazars. They left their country and fled. Until they reached the river called Duna. This migration and the foundation of the Danube Bulgaria is usually dated circa 679. The composition of the horde is unknown, and sources only mention tribal names Kekarar, Kubiar, Kurajur, and clan names Tulo, Ukiel slash Vakil, Ermiar, Egine, and Duradot. The Anglos where Bulgars settled is considered northern Dobruja, secured to the west and north by Danube and its delta, and bounded to the east by the Black Sea. They resettled in northeastern Bulgaria between Shumen and Varna, including Ludogori Plateau and southern Dobruja. The distribution of pre-Christian burial assemblages in Bulgaria and Romania is considered as the indication of the confines of the Bulgar settlement. In the Balkans they merged with the Slavs and other octophonous Romance and Greek-speaking population, like the Thracians and Vlachs, becoming a political and military elite. However, the influence of the pre-Slavic population had relatively little influence on the Slavs and Bulgars indicating their population was reduced in previous centuries. The hinterlands of the Byzantine territory were for years occupied by many groups of Slavs. According to Theophanes, the Bulgars subjugated the so-called seven Slavic tribes, of which the Severites were resettled from the pass of Berigava or Verigava, most likely the Rish Pass of the Balkan Mountains, to the east, while the other six tribes to the southern and western regions as far the boundary with the Pannonian Evers. Scholars consider that the absence of any source recording the Slavic resistance to the invasion was because it was in their interest to be liberated from Byzantine taxation. It is considered that the Slavic tribal organization was left intact, and paid tribute to the ruling Bulgars. According to Nikephoros I and Theophanes, an unnamed fourth brother, believed to be Kuber, having crossed the river Ister, resides in Pannonia, which is now under the sway of the Avars, having made an alliance with the local peoples. 
Kuber later led a revolt against the Avars and with his people moved as far as the region of Thessaloniki in Greek Macedonia. The fifth brother, reported by Nicaphoros I and Theophanes, settling in the five revented cities became a subject of the Romans. This brother is believed to be Elsek, who after a stay in Avar territory left and settled in Italy, in Sapino, Boiano, and Isernia. These Bulgars preserved their speech and identity until the late 8th century. The First Bulgarian Empire had a significant political influence in the Balkans. In the time of Turville the Bulgars helped Byzantines two times, in 705 the Emperor Justinian II to regain his throne, and 717-718 defeating the Arabs during the siege of Constantinople. Savar was the last ruler from the Dulo clan, and the period until circa 768-772 was characterized by the Byzantino-Bulgar conflict and internal crisis. In the short period followed seven rulers from the Uigilandigain clan. Tinlerig managed to establish a pacific policy with Byzantium, and restore imperial power. During the reign of Khan Krum, the empire doubled its size, including new lands in Macedonia and Serbia. He also successfully repelled the invading force of the Byzantines, as well defeated the Pannonian Avars where additionally extended the empire's size. In 865, during the reign of Khan Boris I, the Bulgars accepted Christianity as the official religion, and Eastern Orthodoxy in 879. The greatest expansion of the empire and prosperity during the time of Simeon I is considered as the Bulgarian Golden Age. However, from the time of Peter I their power declined. The Hungarians, Kievan Rus Slavs, as well Pechenegs and Cumans held many raids into their territory, and so weakened were eventually conquered in 1018 by the Byzantine Empire. In 1185, the Bulgarians and Vlachs held a revolt against the Byzantine Empire, and helped by the settled Cumans from Hungary, created the Second Bulgarian Empire ruled by the Azan dynasty. From 1280 till 1322 periodically ruled the Tertar dynasty, and from 1323 till 1396 the Shishman dynasty, all the three of Cuman origin. In 1396, the Bulgarians were conquered by the Ottoman Turks, and only in 1878 established an autonomous principality, while in 1908 declared independence. Bulgars had the typical culture of the nomadic equestrians of Central Asia, who migrated seasonally in pursuit of good pastures, as well attraction to economic and cultural interaction with sedentary societies. Being in contact with sedentary cultures, they began mastering the crafts of blacksmithing, pottery, and carpentry. The politically dominant tribe or clan usually gave its name to the tribal confederation. Such confederations were often encouraged by the imperial powers, for whom it was easier to deal with one ruler than several tribal chieftains. In nomadic society the tribes were political organizations based on kinship, with diffused power. Tribes developed according to the relation with sedentary states, and only managed to conquer them when had social cohesion. If the raiding by the nomads had negative effect on the economic development of their region it could significantly slow down their own social and cultural development. In a nomadic state the nomad and sedentary integration was limited, and usually had vassal tribute system. When the Bulgars arrived in the Balkan their first generations probably still lived a nomadic life in yurts, but they quickly adopted the sunken featured building off rectangular plan and sedentary or seasonal lifestyle of the Slavs and autochthonous population. The Bulgar and Slavic settlements cannot be distinguished other than by the type of spiritual cemeteries. The Bulgars, at least the Danubian Bulgars, had a well-developed clan and military administrative system of inner and outer tribes, governed by the ruling clan. They had many titles, and according to Stephen Ronsiman the distinction between titles which represented offices and mere ornamental dignities was somewhat vague. Main can help in theorize that the titles of the steppe peoples did not reflect the ethnicity of their bearers. According to Magnus Felix and Odius, the Bulgars did not have nobility, yet their leaders and common men became noblemen on the battlefield, indicating social mobility. Tribute paying sedentary vassals, such as the Slavs and Greek speaking population, formed a substantial and important part of Khanate's maintenance. The ruler title in Bulgar inscriptions was Khan, Kana. A counterpart of the Greek phrase was also common in Bulgar inscriptions. The Khavan was the second most important title in the realm, seemingly chief official. Some Bulgar inscriptions, written in Greek and later in Slavonic, referred to the Bulgarian rulers respectively with the Greek title Archon, or the Slavic titles Nyas and Tsar. There are several possible interpretations for the ruler title, Kana Sibigi, 
mentioned in six inscriptions by the Khan Amirtag and two by Malamir. Among the proposed translations for Sibigi or Subigi are Lord of the Army, from the reconstructed Turkic phrase Sibeg paralleling the tested Orc in Turkic Sibashi. Runciman and J.B. Berry considered Ubij or Uvech to be related to the Cuman Turkic Oagu, bright, luminous, heavenly, and more recently from God, from the Indo European Suin Baga, i.e. Subaga. Florin Kurda noted the resemblance in the use of the Kana Sibagi with the Byzantine name and title Basileas. Members of the upper social class bore the title Boila. The nobility was divided onto small and great Boilas. In the 10th century, there were three classes of Boyars the six great Boilas, the outer Boilas, and the inner Boilas, while in the mid 9th century there were a twelve great Boyars. The great Boilas occupied military and administrative offices in the state as well the council where they gathered for decisions and important matters of state. Vegans were the lesser class of the nobility, probably a military class which also participated in the council. The title Bagatur, once as Bogotur, is found in several instances within the inscriptions. It derives from Turkish Bogotur and was a high military rank. The Bulgarian military commander who was defeated by the Croats in the Battle of the Bosnian Highlands was called a Lagabotur which is actually a title comprised by Elo and Bagatur. There are several title associations with uncertain meaning, such as Boilakov Khan, Isergu Boila, Kana Boilakolivar, Bagatur Bagan, Biri Bagan, Seti Bagan and Ikbagan. Kolivar, a rank title, is cited in two inscriptions, and it derives from the Turkish term for a guide, Golagas. The title Zupan, also one says Kopan in the inscriptions, was often mentioned together with the bearer's name. They were traditionally seen as Slavic chiefs. It seems to have meant head of a clan district, as among the South Slavs where it was more widely used, it meant head of a tribe with a high district and court function. The title Tarkin probably represented a high military rank, similar to the Byzantine strategos, of the military governor of a province. The variations Kalu Tarkin and Bullion S. Tarkin are considered to be officers at the head of the Tarkans. Kurta interpreted the title Upan Tarkin as Tarkwan of the Upans. Although it was not recorded on inscriptions, the title Samsis is considered to be related to the royal court. The title Tabare or Iltabare, which derives from the old Turkish Altabaur, like Samsis is not mentioned on inscriptions, but is related to the legates and ambassadors. The Anastasius Bibliothecarius listed Bulgarian legates at the council at Constantinople in 869-870. They were mentioned as Stasis, Serbula, Sundica, Vestrana. Pra Estisisunas, and Alexius Anna. Very little is known about the religion of the Bulgars, but it is believed to have been monotheistic. In Greek language inscriptions from pagan Danube Bulgaria, Bulgar monarchs described themselves as ruler from God, indicating authority from a divine origin, and making an appeal to the deity's omniscience. Presians inscription from Philippi states It is traditionally assumed that the god in question was the Turkic supreme sky deity, Tungri. In the Chinese transcription as Senli, and Turkic as Dantgara and Tengri, it represents the oldest known Turco-Mongolian word. Tungri may have originated in the Xinhu Confederacy, which settled on the frontiers off China in the 2nd century BC. The Confederacy probably had both pre-Turkic and pre-Mongolian ethnic elements. In modern Turkish, the word for God, Tenri, derives from the same root. Tengrism apparently engaged various shamanic practices. According to Mercia McDermott, Tungra was the male deity connected with sky, light and the sun. The cult incorporated Tungra's female equivalent and principal goddess, Ame, the deity of fertility. The epsilon sign between two bars, which can be frequently found in early medieval Bulgaria is associated with deity Tungra. However, its exact meaning and use remains unknown. The most sacred creatures to Tungra were horses and eagles, particularly white horses. Pros amulets with representations of the sun. Horses and other animals were found at Bulgar archaeological sites. This could explain the variety of Bulgar taboos, including those about animals. Ravio Bukharat believed that such an autocratic and monotheistic religion henotheism, as seen in the report by Ahmad ibn Fadlan about the Oghuz Turks, kindred to the Bulgars, made the acceptance of Islam more natural and easier in Volga, Bulgaria. Another mention of Tungri is on the severely damaged Greek inscription found on a presumed altar stone near Madara. Tentatively deciphered as Consibigio Murtag, ruler from God, was, and made sacrifice to God Tangra. Itcher Gubboil Gold. An Ottoman manuscript recorded that the name of God, in Bulgarian, 
was Tangri. A piece of ethnographic evidence which has been invoked to support the belief that the Bulgars worship Tungri slash Tangra is the relative similarity of the name Tungri to Tura, the name of the supreme deity of the traditional religion of the Chuvash people, who are traditionally regarded as descendants of the Volga Bulgars. Nevertheless, the Chuvash religion today is markedly different from Tengrism and can be described as a local form of polytheism, due to pagan beliefs of the forest dwellers of Finno Ugric origin who lived in their vicinity, with some elements borrowed from Islam. Paganism was closely connected with the old clan system, and the remains of totemism and shamanism were preserved even after the crossing of Danube. The Schumann played in the archaeological literature is often associated with shamanism. In the 9th century, it was recorded that before a battle the Bulgars used to practice enchantments and jests and charms in certain auguries. Lutprand of Cremona reported that Bion, son of Simeoni, could through magic Amdidasis transform into a wolf. Clement of Ord reported the worship of fire and water by the Bulgars, while in the 11th century Theophylact of Ord remembered that before the Christianization the Bulgars respected the sun, moon and the stars, and sacrificed dogs to them. Allegedly, the Dulo clan had the dog as its sacred animal. To this today Bulgarians still use the expression he kills the dog to mean he gives the orders, a relic of the time when the Dulo Khan sacrificed a dog to the deity Tangra. Remains of dog and deer have been found in Bulgars' graves, and it seems the wolf also had a special mythological significance. The Bulgars were by ritual, either cremating or burying their dead, and often interred them with personal objects, food, and sacred animals. Because of the cult of the sun, the Bulgars had a preference for the south. Their main buildings and shrines faced south, as well their yurts, which were usually entered from the south, although less often from the east. Excavations showed that Bulgars buried their dead on a north-south axis, with their heads to the north so that the deceased faced south. The Slavs practiced only cremation, the remains were placed in urns, and like the Bulgars, with the conversion to Christianity and Hume the dead on west-east axis. The only example of a mixed Bulgar-Slavic cemetery is in Istria near ancient Histria, on the coast of the Black Sea. Dito Mitrov has argued that the Kuban Bulgars also adopted elements of Iranian religious beliefs. He noticed Iranian influences on the cult of the former Caucasian Huns capital Varekin, making a religious syncretism between the principal Turkic deity Tungri and the Iranian sun god Ver. Dimitrov cited the work by V. A. Kuznetsov, who considered the resemblance between the layout of the Zoroastrian temples of fire and the Kuban Bulgar center, Humarin Citadel, situated 11 kilometers to the north of the town Kurchivsk. Where the pottery belonged to the salt of Omayaki culture. Kuznikov also found a connection in the plan of the Danube Bulgar sanctuaries at Pliska, Veliki Preslav, and Matara. The architectural similarities include two squares of ashlars inserted one into another, oriented towards the summer sunrise. One of these sites was transformed into a Christian church, which is taken as evidence that they served a religious function. The view of the Parthian and Sasanian influence, which Franz Altheim also argued, is considered debatable, showing the cultural impact of the Iranian world and communities in the Pontic Caspian steppe. Many scholars believe that the square shape, with the north south and east west axis of the Bulgar sacral monuments, is very similar to those of Turkic Kagans in Mongolia. However, that the Bulgar residents in Pliska and Palace of Omurtag were inspired by the Byzantine architecture is considered indisputable. Christianity had already begun to penetrate, probably via their Slavic subjects, when it was adopted in the First Bulgarian Empire by Nyas Boris I in 865 Asa state religion. There was interest in Islam as well, seen in the book Answers to the Questions of the King of the Berger addressed to him about Islam and unity by the Abbasid Caliph al Mamlan for the Pontic slash Bosporan Bulgars, while it was officially adopted in Volka Bulgaria as a state religion in 922. The origin and language of the Bulgars has been the subject of debate since around the start of the 20th century. It is generally accepted that at least the Bulgarlite spoke a language that was a member of the Ogre branch of the Turkic language family, alongside the now extinct Khazar and the solitary survivor Ops languages, Chuvash. According to P. Golden, this association is apparent from the fragments of texts and isolated words and phrases preserved in inscriptions. In addition to language, their culture and state structure retain many Central Asian features. Military and hierarchical terms such as Khan slash Khan, Khanasobigi, Kapagan, Tarkan, Begator, and Boyle appear to be of Turkic origin. The Bulgar calendar within the nominalia of the Bulgarian Khans had a 12 year animal cycle, 
similar to the one adopted by Turkic and Mongolian peoples from the Chinese, with animal names and numbers deciphered as Turkic. Tungri was their supreme god. Bulgar inscriptions were written mostly in Greek or Cyrillic characters, most commonly in Greek or Graeco Bulgar, sometimes with Slavic terms, thus allowing scholars to identify some of the Bulgar glosses. Several Bulgar inscriptions were found in northeastern Bulgaria and parts of Romania, written in runes similar to the Old Turkic alphabet, they apparently have a sacral meaning. Altheim argued that the runes were brought into Europe from Central Asia by the Huns, and were an adapted version of the old Sogdian alphabet in the Hunnic slash Ogre Turkic language. The custom of stone engravings are considered to have Sasanian, Turkic, and Roman parallels. The Madara writer resembles work of the Sasanian rock relief tradition, but its actual masonry tradition and cultural source is unknown. The Danubian Bulgars were unable to alter the predominantly Slavic character of Bulgaria seen in the toponymy and names of the capitals Pliska and Preslav. They preserved their own native language and customs for about 200 years, but a bilingual period was recorded since the 9th century. Golden argued that Bulgar Turkic almost disappeared with the transition to Christianity and Slavicization in the middle of the 9th century. When the ruling class abandoned its native language and adopted Slavic, according to Jean W. Sedler, it was so complete that no trace of Turkic speech patterns remained in old Slavic texts. The Bulgarian Christian Church used Slavic dialect from Macedonia. Among Bulgarian academics, notably Peter Dobrev, a hypothesis linking the Bulgar language to the Iranian languages has been popular since the 1990s. Most proponents still assume an intermediate stance, proposing certain signs of Iranian influence on a Turkic substrate. The names Asperuk and Besmer from the nominalia list, for example, were established as being of Iranian origin. Other Bulgarian scholars actively oppose the Iranian hypothesis. According to Raymond de Trez, the Iranian theory is rooted in the periods of anti Turkish sentiment in Bulgaria and is ideologically motivated. Due to the lack of definitive evidence, modern scholarship uses an ethnogenesis approach in explaining the Bulgars' origin. More recent theories view the nomadic confederacies, such as the Bulgars, as the formation of several different cultural, political and linguistic entities that could dissolve as quickly as they formed, entailing a process of ethnogenesis. According to Walter Pohl, the existential fate of the tribes and their confederations depended on their ability to adapt to an environment going through rapid changes, and to give this adaptation a credible meaning rooted in tradition and ritual. Slavs and Bulgars succeeded because their form of organization proved as stable and as flexible as necessary. While the Pannonian Evers failed in the end because their model could not respond to new conditions. Pohl wrote that members of society's lower strata did not feel themselves to be part of any large scale ethnic group, the only distinct classes were within the armies and the ruling elite. Recent studies consider ethnonyms closely related with warrior elites who ruled over a variety of heterogeneous groups. The groups adopted new ideology and name as political designation, while the elites claimed right to rule in royal descent through origin myths. When the Turkic tribes began to enter into the Pontic Caspian steppe in the post Hunnic era, or as early as the 2nd century AD, their confederations incorporated an array of ethnic groups of newly joined Turkic, Altaic Turkic, Caucasian, Iranian, and Finno Ugric peoples. During their Western Eurasian migrations to the Balkans, they also came into contact with Armenian, Semitic, Slavic, Thracian, and Anatolian Greek, among other populations. From the 6th to 8th centuries, Distinctive Bulgar monuments of the Shiva Shuvka type were built upon ruins of the late Sarmatian culture of the 2nd to 4th century Sad, and the 6th century Pankovka culture of the Andes and Slavs. Early medieval Saltovo Mayaki settlements in the Crimea since the 8th century were destroyed by the Pchengs during the 10th century. Although the older Iranian tribes were enveloped by the widespread Turkic migration into the Pontic Caspian steppe, the following centuries saw a complete disappearance of both the Iranian and Turkic languages, indicating dominance of the Slavic language among the common people. Genetic and anthropological researches have shown that the tribes of the Eurasian steppes were not always ethnically homogeneous, and were often unions of multiple ethnicities. Skeletal remains from Kazakhstan, excavated from different sites dating between the 15th century BC to the 5th century AD, have been analyzed. The distribution of East and West Eurasian lineages through time in the region agrees with available archaeological information. Prior to the 13th, 7th century BC, all samples belonged to European lineages, while later, an arrival of East Asian sequences that coexisted with the previous genetic substratum was detected. 
Hundreds of excavated mummies in the Tarim Basin have Caucasoid features, revealing the presence of an ancient Caucasoid substratum in East Asia. These findings are associated with the ancient Tikarians and Tocharian languages. According to P. Golden, the Central Asian Turkic peoples have multiple points of origin and are a mixture of steppes ethnic groups. Eric Hobsbawm considered the languages to be almost always semi artificial constructs. Political processes, rather than linguistic, tribal, or ethnic elements, created new communities. Golden noted that the Turkic tribes in the Western Eurasia since the first millennium BC had contacts with Proto Indo Europeans. Those tribes were considered by Golden to be the ancestors of the Ogyric Turks. Recent blood and DNA studies of present-day populations in Central Asia confirm the extreme genetic heterogeneity. The latest DNA studies on Turkic people in Central Asia and Eastern Europe also confirm genetic heterogeneity, indicating that the Turkic tribal confederations included various Hafla groups. A comparative genetic study shows the Bulgarians primarily represented by the Western Eurasian Y Hapla groups, with 40% belonging to Hapla group CV13 and IN423 and 20% to RM17. Hapla groups common in the Middle East and in Southwestern Asia occur at frequencies of 19% and 5%, respectively. Hapla groups C, N and Q together occur at the negligible frequency of only 1.5% among Bulgarians. The DNA studies of the Tuvash people, who speak a Turkic language, show that they are genetically related to Caucasians, Mediterraneans, and Middle Easterners, partially Central or Northern Europeans but with little Central Asian Altaic gene flow. The DNA studies of the Tatars, Bashkirs and Russians and Chelyabinsk oblasts show European and Finno-Ugric impact on the Tatars, Caucasoid and East Asian impact were reported for the Bashkirs. Some aspects of genetic relationships were found between Tatars and Shavashes, as well Bulgarians, which could support the view that the Tatars may be descendants of ancient Bulgars. It is currently unknown with which Hapla group the Bulgars should be associated. Some scholars consider the possibility that only a cultural and low genetic influence was brought into the region. The paleoanthropological material from all sites in Volga region, Ukraine and Moldova attributed to the Bulgars testify complex ethnocultural processes. The material shows the assimilation between the local population and the migrating newcomers. In all sites can be traced the anthropological type found in Zlivka necropolis near the village of Ilyshevki, the district of Donetsk of Brachiocaranic Caucasoid with small East Asian admixtures but with Bulgar males being more mongoloid than females. Despite the morphological proximity, there is a visible impact of the local population, in the Volga region of Finno-Ugric and ancient Turkic, in Ukraine of Sarmatian Alans, and in Moldova of Slavic people. The comparative analysis showed large morphological proximity between the medieval and modern population of the Volga region. The examined graves in northern Bulgaria and southern Romania show different somatic types, including Caucasoid Mediterranean and less often East Asian. The pre-Christian burial customs in Bulgaria indicate diverse social, i.e. nomadic and sedentary, and cultural influences. In some necropolises specific to the Danube Bulgars, artificial deformation was found in 80% of the skulls. The Bulgars had a special type of shamanic medicine men who performed trepanations of the skull, usually near the sagittal suture. This practice had a medical application, as well as a symbolic purpose, in two cases the patient had brain problems. According to Mankin Helfen and Roshif, the artificial deformation of skulls, and other types of burial artifacts in Bulgars' graves, are similar to those of the Sarmatians, and Sarmatized Turks or Turkicized Sarmatians of the post-Hunnic graves in the Ukrainian steppe. In modern ethnic nationalism there is some rivalry for the Bulgar legacy. The Volga Tatars and Chuvash people are said to be descended from the Volga Bulgars, and there may have been ethnogenic influences on the Bashkirs, Karaches and Bukars also. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.